Bonjour, mon ami. You are listening to the Sort Yourself Out podcast. This week, we're discussing something that snags most of us who are interested in personal and spiritual growth. How do we cope when the people around us just do not get or understand our journey? I'm your host, Janine Hunt, natural health therapist for over 30 years, hypnotherapist, lifelong student, and spiritual seeker. I like to seek out the most effective practices and techniques that provide the greatest bang for my buck and the fastest route to freedom from whatever is holding us back. I can't wait to share with you these powerful techniques so that you too can sort yourself out, know deeper meaning in your life, and best of all, a sense of inner peace. So let's get started. Well, hello there. I'm so pleased that you've joined me today. This week, we're talking about how we deal with the people in our lives who don't understand our journey. And this can be a complex issue because they see us changing. And unless they're jumping up and down saying, at last, then we're probably making them somewhat uncomfortable as we upset the apple cart and bring all sorts of unknowns into the relationship. And this dynamic can happen on many levels. It could be that someone is on a health kick and the other is going, oh no, no more green smoothies. Or maybe one person is really trying to improve their psychological well-being or is getting on the spiritual path. And the other person feels threatened by the new person they're now living with. And often as we change, we can get a little bit holier than thou and look down upon others who just don't seem interested in growing and developing. And worse, we can even begin to feel like we're leaving them behind or like we've got very little in common anymore. So I want to just jump right in with some tips and ideas and insights to help you make the best of it as you navigate this new terrain. My first thought here is to counter that tendency to be holier than thou, you know, to look down our nose at others who don't seem to want us to change or to keep up with us. And I've got air quotes around that keep up with us. So this is an excellent time to practice humility. The weird thing is that as we grow and raise our consciousness, there's a perverse kind of side effect where we get militant about our new ways and we can be really judgmental towards the other people in our lives who are not on the same path as us. And I've been in this position myself and it's really interesting many years on as I can see and understand that the change I was going through, including my attitude toward others was like the swinging of a pendulum, all militant and self-righteous. Like, hey, if you're not doing what I'm doing, then you're an ignorant pleb. Okay, I hope I wasn't quite that bad, but you get my drift, right? Maybe you know what I mean too. And then with the passing of time, my attitude softened and the pendulum wasn't swinging violently from side to side anymore. As I developed a more harmonious outlook, and reached a kind of detached equilibrium. So that's my first pointer. Try to be humble and understand how your change is affecting the people around you. There may be some upheaval and disharmony in your relationships, but chances are that you will achieve balance and harmony as you get more grounded in your new ways. So try to be humble and understanding. Next. Rather than trying to convince those around you about the virtues of what you are doing, be content to set an example. Once again, I know this firsthand, smug, know-it-all old me, that the majority of the time people do just not want to know, especially the dudes and parents. Trust me, if they're interested, they'll ask. Otherwise, It can sometimes be best just to keep it to yourself and exhibit your healthy glow or higher state of well-being. Just set the example. 
And then one day, they might just say, hey, you seem really happy now. What have you been doing? I want some of that. And then, of course, you can hold forth all you want. Yay! So allow the other people in your life to inhabit their own timing. Don't try to force things on them or make them change. Just set an example and hold a live and let live attitude. And that'll go a long way to reducing the friction that develops when one of you is going through a change. Next, don't be concerning yourself with what other people are thinking of you. As Abraham Maslow said, be independent of the good opinion of other people. Just carry on doing your thing because you know it's the right thing for you to do. You don't need anyone's approval. And if you're seeking it, you'll most likely be disappointed. Work on your own self-esteem and give yourself the space to grow. The people around you may not understand, and that's okay. Why should they? Especially as we step on the spiritual path, we need to be self-reliant and let other people get on with their own lives. It can seem lonely, but spiritual seekers are largely self-taught. You'll have teachers and mentors for sure, but you've got to make it happen yourself. It can be helpful to spend some time with like-minded people. It may mean making some new friends or joining a new group for meditation or whatever that supports your growth. Just don't expect all your family and friends to be saying, hey, have you seen what's going on with Janine? Isn't it great? It's probably more likely that your change is making them fearful or insecure that they're going to lose you. Or maybe it's even highlighting to them a change that they need to make too, but that they're resisting. Abraham Maslow also said, He who belies his talent, the born painter who sells stockings instead, the intelligent man who lives a stupid life, the man who sees the truth and keeps his mouth shut, the coward who gives up his manliness, all these people perceive in a deep way that they have done wrong to themselves and despise themselves for it. Out of this self-punishment may come only neurosis, but there may equally come renewed courage, righteous indignation, increased self-respect because of thereafter doing the right thing. In a word, growth and improvement can come through pain and conflict. So it's such a complex dynamic in a relationship when one person starts to change. You can get a lot of insight by looking more deeply at your relationships with others to see what lessons you are each learning from them. Might as well make lemonade, right? Next, don't assume that just because you can't see much growth in others that it's not going on. Their method and area of development may not be the same as yours, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Also, according to the Ageless Wisdom, some people may have incarnations where outwardly not much growth is apparent, and they could be having a relatively restful and restorative lifetime after a really strenuous one last time around. Or maybe they are focusing on the basics of holding down a job and supporting their family. It's not for us to say there is no growth happening because we just cannot know that. And I know many couples where the woman especially is outwardly blazing ahead of the dude into personal development, going on retreats, making new friends in those areas, just really outwardly, obviously forging ahead in personal growth and development. And a lot of the times, the guy doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot in that same manner. But if you look carefully, they already quietly evince these lovely qualities that the women are outwardly striving for. In the guise, it's already a part of their nature. Neato, eh? So 
it's just not always apparent. And a lot of the times, the people around you are already quietly setting that example of things that you're outwardly striving for. So just kind of look into things a little bit more deeply in your relationships. And you might find that there are things that you can really appreciate about the ones you're with. Okay, I have got one more thing for you. A little practice that I found to be really helpful in smoothing over conflict. And that is to spend a couple minutes per day visualizing your relationship going well, being grateful for the other person, their lovely qualities, see yourselves having fun together, supporting and encouraging each other, having a deep and meaningful relationship and deep and meaningful discussions, enjoying each other's company. This stuff really works. So be prepared to make this little effort and you will see the effect it has on the way you feel about them and also the way that they feel about you. It creates this sort of perceptible, almost tangible shift in your relationship. Now, if you would like some help on how to visualize or to amplify your visualization sessions, I've created a free visualization essentials guide that you can download to easily get started on creating those enhanced relationships and the things that you want to create in your life. It's my no fluff, all you need to know essentials to start consciously creating your ideal life, the things you want, better relationships, etc. Creating those things in your life today. So you'll find the link in the show notes, or you can get it at the inspirationcloud.com slash S-Y-O-17. And that's the number 17, the digits 17, the inspirationcloud.com slash S-Y-O-17. So before we wrap it up, I just want to reiterate what is probably the greatest insight I've got to offer here. And that is going back to the swinging of the pendulum I mentioned earlier. When you're learning and growing, you're all gung-ho and full of enthusiasm. Swinging to one side of the pendulum, it can be easy to say, oh, so-and-so, we're just not on the same wavelength anymore. And particularly for a significant other, to think that maybe you don't belong together anymore. But in time, you swing to the other side, thinking, Ah, I was probably a bit of an asshole then with my self-righteous attitude. And then a little while later, you come to rest in the middle. And, this is the biggie, glad that you didn't do anything drastic. This is the point in that middle where you can observe both sides that you've swung to. And this is a sure sign that you have integrated the change and grown out through to the other side. And I've gone through this many times myself. I still get caught out swinging from side to side, mind you. But it's happened enough that I can now recognize the pattern. So consider carefully before making drastic changes like ending a relationship. Because chances are... It will all come right in the end, and you'll be glad that you're still together. And this is especially true when you can look at those relationships you're having and the troubles you're having within them and mine them for the lessons you're learning from each other and through that relationship and to look at cause and effect and what you're both getting from this, how you're both growing through what you are experiencing together. So I'm just putting it out there. You know, maybe in your case, the right thing to do is to end a relationship. It, it all depends. Everyone's different and all relationships are different and scenarios are different within relationships. But I just want you to think about this, that that's one thing I've really noticed in my life, that there have been many times where I've been close to making drastic decisions and then sometimes 
as soon as a month later, and sometimes a lot longer, like a year or so later, I, I'll look back at it and think, wow, I'm really glad I did not take that drastic action. You know, we integrate things in different spaces of time. Depends what it is. Sometimes it takes a while to integrate a change or to arrive at that more balanced and harmonious place where we're no longer swinging from side to side and we've reached that middle ground of balance and harmony where we can look back in hindsight and appreciate what we've gone through and how that person has helped us through it. So that's just my two cents worth there, something to consider. With hindsight, you often achieve that state of balance, the swinging stops, and you'll be grateful that you stuck with the relationship where you are currently experiencing disharmony. Okay, my friend, that's all I've got for you today. I hope the things we've discussed can lead you toward greater harmony in your relationships and smooth out your journey along your chosen path. Now, before I finish up entirely, I have some really exciting news to share on how you can amplify your well-being as well as your positive impact in the world. In a couple of months, I will be opening the doors to my new membership experience called The Inner Circle. In this monthly membership, I'll be offering my most powerful top-down techniques to sort yourself out, to free yourself of your hang-ups and blockages, to take charge of your mind, and to nourish your soul. There will be mini-courses, hypnosis sessions, guided meditations, tapping videos, neurolinguistic programming techniques, mindfulness training, the ageless wisdom teachings, and so much more so that wherever you are on your path to greater well-being, you can start right there and then take the next step when you're ready. You'll have all the tools, practices, and techniques you need to not just heal your life, but to make it more meaningful, fulfilling, peaceful, and beautiful. If you're ready to transform your well-being and would like to be kept informed, go on over to theinspirationcloud.com slash membership to get on the wait list, and I will keep you in the loop. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. The page you want to go to is theinspirationcloud.com slash membership. I'm so excited about this new project of mine. It's been a brainchild for many years now, and I am actively putting together this premium content, and I just cannot wait until it's out in the world. This, to me, folks, is what I am meant to be doing here. This is really what I feel is my life's work. Okay. I am so grateful that you spent some time with me today. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week when we're discussing a topic that is really close to my heart. And for me, that is just the natural progression of uplifting your own well being. And that is how to be an agent of healing in the world. So I'll see you then. Bye bye. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. I really hope you found it helpful and full of uplifting ideas that you can put into practice in your life. And if you have, chances are your friends and family will too. So please share it with them on social media. You'll be helping them to sort themselves out because I bet you think they need it, right? But seriously, you'll also be doing me a huge favor and I will be eternally grateful for your generosity. It would also be lovely if you would leave me a review on iTunes, preferably a nice one, please. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast while you're there. If you have any questions or would like me to address a certain topic, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at info at theinspirationcloud.com. Have a good one, folks. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.